Hello, and welcome to Nameless Studio. I'm your host, Tyler. Today we are going to continue working on our 11 by 14 Death Stranding encaustic piece. But before we get started, I just want to take a moment to talk about my uh, abstract process. What I tend to do is I tend to take elements and themes from a certain subject matter and sort of uh, mesh and meld them together in a bit of a abstract expressionist landscape. Um, so like in this current piece, um, we have elements of sort of a world that has fallen into decay, um, partly due to uh, rain that itself sort of deteriorates as, it's, as it falls. Um, we also have um, this sort of black amorphic goo that sort of um, embodies an area where a creature known as BTs sort of inhabits. We also have um, elements of, of babies, what they call BBs in these series. So there are definitely some in utero and baby shape elements happening throughout here as well. Um, things like that. I tend to sort of bring in and mesh into a piece um, that the overall standing kind of looks a bit like um, an abstract landscape. So with that in mind, one, let me know if you can see the scary baby faces staring directly into your soul. And two, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so where we left off last time, we had just put down a layer of Neocolor uh, 2 Pastel, this uh, the splack that we see here. Now, since last time it's dried just a little bit, um, so as you can see, when I take a paper towel to it, I'm able to sort of move um, it a little bit around, but a lot of that pigmentation has kind of now stuck to that layer of encaustic underneath. So this way I'm able to move it without just sort of wiping it away, but actually kind of uh, almost scuffing and pushing it just a little bit. Um, so it gets a little bit more sort of uh, uh, street um, sort of gesture marks rather than um, sort of just uh, sort of liquid movement. So it's got a little bit more sort of direction and energy to it than just sort of wash. So, and as you can see, as it dries, it also becomes a lot less noticeable. Um, those very dark elements that we had that were when they, when they were very wet um, at this point have dried um, to uh, much softer, um, more toned down, less saturated sort of colors. So when it comes to the um, Neo colors, you really do kind of have to wait to see how it dries to really know what that layer is going to look like. Because a lot of the times it'll dry and it will not have the impact that it, you start with. And so because of that, um, how we started off, we at least had kind of a nice little sort of uh, show of what it would look like to have much darker elements kind of creeping up the side. So a lot of today is going to be spent be spent sort of building out more of that, but with some other scenarios than just um, Neocolor. And now we're bringing back an element that we didn't even see at all during the last piece that we worked on, and that is tape. Um, we didn't use a lick of tape in the last piece, and we're not going to be using much for this piece either. But we're using a little bit to tape off an area that I'm going to, as you see here, um, do some transfer paper markings on. Um, we want to really enforce the rain aspect of this area. And we did quite a lot of interesting work with that white neo color before to get some of those interesting line elements that look a lot like rain. But this way we have a much more direct um, interpretation of what rain would be with just straight line aspects running down this chunk of substrate. So we're going to tone it back just a little bit here and there, just rub a little bit of it off to wear it in a little bit. Um, but we have now a big old chunk um, of graphite area that looks a lot like rain. And that also helps sort of ground and put more detail into that top half that was feeling a little empty at the time, but that we didn't want to put too much in to draw a lot of attention to. Okay. And now we have a... Um, now yeah, just a, one more little graphite element to the piece um, over here to kind of enforce a bit of a uh, 
we want a shape over here. I'm not going to go into too much more detail yet. Um, this shape will sort of build as we go um, with the rest of the elements in play. But we do want um, a little bit more defined feature in this part of the uh, composition. And now for some reason, um, it didn't capture the footage of me um, putting down these couple very light marks of um, encaustic. But as you can see, I put down a couple very small marks um, that's actually not the intense carbon black that we've been using, but actually a graphite, um, a graphite black. Partly because we are working with a lot of similar toned sort of scenarios here, so we want as much sort of uh, gradient play that we can have. So between the um, intense carbon black, the neo color pastels that we're doing, and then this carbon, uh, I'm sorry, then this graphite black that we're putting on top of that, all sort of add in just kind of a micro layer changes in gradient. Um, that we can kind of play with a little bit more than just using either one or two elements that way. So we're just kind of melting these in here to basically act as a, another base layer that we're going to then go over with uh, more of that intense carbon black to give it even more defined uh, structure and dark tone spots. Um, because even when this one dries out, um, it's not going to be nearly as intense as the intense carbon black. Go figure. So, with that being said, we have a nice sort of uh, next couple layers put down. Um, definitely reinforced with that neo color that we put down originally. Um, and every time I give a firing, before I go into it with an exacto knife or anything else like that, I always make sure that it is cool enough to the touch. Because when I go at it, Sometimes I just want to be scraping away a little bit of layer. I don't want to take giant chunks out of things. So the temperature of um, your encaustic piece is very important. But that being said, it dries so quickly um, that as long as you have patience of five to 10 minutes, you're good to go. So a lot better than having to wait maybe a day or two or a week when it comes to something like oil paints. So at this point, I'm just kind of taking an X-Acto knife and toning in a couple of these areas around the outskirts. Um, the, the midsection is all going to be covered back up um, with a bit more encaustic once we put some layers on. But these, these outer elements, um, I definitely want to tone in and, and, and hone in a bit more um, to look a little bit more finished as we go. Because with a, with a larger piece like this, a lot of what we're doing is building in little sections as we go. So once we move on from a section, it, it is more or less complete as we, as we move along. So especially defining edges is a good way to make sure that you're not having to go back in and retweak after you put down another layer, because sometimes uh, that can be very difficult depending on what you're looking to do. Because you don't want to reactivate or change any of the other um, elements that you've put down beforehand or maybe after. So. Just a little scraping. And as you can see, the composition is starting to feel a little bit more complete now with the addition of that um, sort of graphite rain features in the upper right. That definitely kind of grounds that along with the little bit of gradient that we had going on with the neo color up there. So that has a nice sort of toned in area now. The bottom right is now feeling a little bit more grounded. Um, we're definitely having more of a foreground future going on there. So it's it's starting to feel like a more complete piece at this at this point. There's definitely a few more layers to go, but it's feeling a lot nicer. And so now we're going to try and mask just a little bit um, between the intense carbon base layer and this graphite second layer with a little bit more neo color, um, just to, to, to bridge the gaps between some of the some of the ways that the paints interact with each other, which again will get masked even more as we put down more layers. Um, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. And the other thing is with this with this neo color, once it dries, there's probably going to be a bit of a sheen difference between the neo colors and the encaustics. Sometimes that can 
be mitigated um, by paper towel and doing some sort of rubbing to soften the encaustic. Other times it's best just to then do another clear coat or something to give everything a nice even layer. But keep that in mind that sometimes the encaustics and the neo colors don't register as the same sort of finish when you're working with them. Um, so again, more reason to wait for those for those neo colors to really jive before you understand exactly how they're interacting with your other layers. It's a great tool, but sometimes can be a little finicky to know exactly what it's going to be until it has completely dried. And being that you are drying liquid on top of a non-porous wax substrate, that can take a little bit of time to allow it to dry, depending on how watered down you're making your um, your neo color. So always keep that in mind when working with the neo colors. Great tool, but sometimes can be a little finicky. And right now I'm just kind of taking it to the edges to kind of give a, a little bit of a of a of a vignetting around the whole thing, give it a little bit more of a encroach sort of darkness happening all over the piece. And that is all for us today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to Nameless Studio for more content like this. If you'd like to see more artwork by yours truly, uh, please go to tylerrogersart.com where you can find uh, a complete catalog of all my past works and even a few up for sale, including some featured in previous videos. As always, I've been Tyler with Nameless Studio. Until next time, be seeing you.